Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Today is all about finger style acoustic guitar and how to get the best recording. Now, as you may know, if you're a guitar player, even if you're not, you need to learn this because guitar players will love you if you get good at recording their guitars. You see this thing right there? That's a guitar pick, AKA a plectrum. This is a volume machine. When I apply this to this, it makes some really loud sounds. Compared to these fleshy nubs here, they're just not as loud. Also, a strumming motion like this, whoosh, is a lot louder than a plucking motion like this. Blink. So we need to have a completely different approach to recording our acoustic guitar when it is a finger style part. That's been my experience and I found an approach that works really, really well. First off, let's talk about with single microphone, uh, sing strumming acoustic guitar, this is my go-to. I get a microphone, hi baby. I have it pointed around right here on the guitar, around the 12th, 14th fret where the neck meets the body. And I'm, you know, I'm about eight to 12 inches away. That's my starting point. Usually gets a good sound, move it up here, move it down here, move it around a little bit to get the sound for that day, for that guitar, for that part. For finger style, I've never had that position work very well. I've always had to change things up. And a few years ago, I finally discovered what I think is the holy grail of recording finger style acoustic guitar. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. It comes in five parts, so let's dive in and take a listen to what these sound like. Number one, record the guitar in stereo using an XY technique. Now this means you're gonna need two microphones and I'm gonna demonstrate with these expensive Earthworks mics, but for the stuff we're gonna record today, I'm using a $130 pair, pair of Personas microphones that sound great. But when you use two microphones, what I wanna do is record it in an XY pattern. That means if you're the guitar, I'm gonna put the microphones like this and point them at you. It's not polite to point, I know. And that's the sound. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. Stereo, because if it's just me and a guitar, I wouldn't mind having a little more width out of the guitar. If it's a big, huge mix, then the stereo nest doesn't really matter. But if we're talking finger style acoustic, chances are we're just gonna hear that guitar or just a couple of guitars. So we could probably spare the room in our stereo mix to give the guitar some width. This allows us to do that, but it also keeps us from having any weird phase issues. When you have these microphones in a coincident pair, that's your dollar word for the day, then the sound hits both microphones at roughly the same time. As soon as you space them out, then the sound is hitting both mics at a different time because they're always gonna be slightly different distances from the sounds they're picking up. When they're close together, they're the same distance from everything because they're just right there. That prevents there from being wonkiness when you go to put them in mono. So let's say we record this in stereo, but then later I decide this song needs to be huge. I don't need that to be stereo. I wanna make it mono now by panning both to the middle. Well, if I record these with a space pair, there's a good chance that that's gonna sound funny when I fold it back to mono. But if I record it with a coincident pair, meaning X, Y, or some variation of that with a different angle, then when I go to mono, it almost sounds exactly the same, just less wide. Now, the downside is it doesn't sound super wide when you have it in stereo, but the foldability to mono really helps for me. And I tested this out today. We'll listen to a few examples where I tried it out with something like this, which is kind of like ORTF, which is like a about the space of your ears apart like that. Uh, and it sounds cool and it sounds a little bit wider, but in mono every time it just got a little bit wonky. So I'm sticking with Old Faithful, which is X, Y, Wakanda forever. Number two, set both preamps to the same level. Rather than getting a lopsided recording and then adjusting one of the preamps to make it sound balanced left to right, I would rather have both preamps be set to the exact same setting and then I use some other techniques in number four that we'll talk about to get that balance. So. X, Y for number one, same level on the preamps for number two. Number three, center the microphones over the sound hole. You see that hole right there? That's known as the sound hole. And you may know, if you point a microphone directly at the sound hole, it sounds like garbage. It's a lot of low end, it makes it very boomy sounding. You tend to avoid that. We're actually gonna go right after the sound hole for this technique, and you'll hear it in a second. It does sound good because neither mic is gonna be pointed directly at it. It's gonna be kind of pointing down here and up here, and somehow it just makes a beautiful sound. Number four, move the guitar to balance left to right. So once you're set up in position and you start to play and you see that it's lopsided, there's more level on the left than the right, physically move yourself or move the guitarist over until it's balanced. I know it sounds weird, but bam, right there. You're seeing levels like this, leave the preamps alone and go right there until it's balanced. Number five, get close but not too close. Since we're talking about a quieter signal with finger style guitar, if we mic it from 12 to 18 inches away, 
it's going to be thinner, softer, and there's a good chance we're just going to pick up more room noise. If we get closer to the guitar, we'll get a closer, more intimate sound. It'll be fuller, warmer, possibly a little boomier, but we're going to capture that intimate sound. And that's what finger style guitar is all about. We want this intimate capture. And I found just from my experience, starting about that far and then moving a little bit closer, a little bit farther away tends to be the sweet spot. All right, put on your listening ears. It's time to listen to what this sounds like. Uh, I'll have the session pulled up. You can see the levels, the meters in Studio One. I'm using, like I said, a pair of PM2 microphones from Personas. As of today, they sell for $129 on Sweetwater. Very cool microphones. I'll link those in the description. Let's listen. <laughs> Okay, we've got X, Y, we've got the guitar about this far away, and if we start playing, we can see on the levels, it's a little left heavy, so let's move this way. Alright, that feels like the right spot, and they're pointed pretty much right at the sound hole, maybe a little further south but I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let's try recording. Okay, I like this one. It's got the left to right balance that I want. It's got the intimacy that I want, but it's a little bit boomy. I'm about that far away. Let me back it up to maybe 12 inches, see what that sounds like. Okay, that retains the intimacy with a little less boominess. Still a little bit of extra low end there I wouldn't mind getting rid of. Uh, before I grab an EQ, let's try it from even farther away, maybe 18 inches to two feet away. As much as I like the aggressiveness of that first one, I can I just know it's going to be too much low end to mix. So we're going to go with the middle option. That feels like it's going to play the most nicely with the mix while still giving us that intimacy. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun and mess things around. Let's take that XY and flip it this way, sort of an ORTF type recording and see what it sounds like. Okay, not a bad sound. It's got a very a little bit wider sound than this one. Interesting. So the 12 inches away one, XY, sounds warmer, narrower, but fuller. The ORTF sounds wider, but a little bit thinner. Now let's see what they sound like in mono. Remember we talked about how, how are things gonna fold down to mono if we need them to. Here is the 12 inches away XY in mono, then I'll flip to the ORTF. sound too bad but it does feel like there's a little hollowing out that happens on the ORTF. I'll click the mono on and off on the ORTF first then we'll do the other one. Here we go. how that one almost doesn't change at all. No, it's not as wide in stereo, but there's a little bit of width. It feels to me like I'm sitting in front of a giant acoustic guitar. It's not 
wall to wall wide, but there's a little width there. But then when I flip it to mono, it still sounds almost exactly the same. Whereas with the spread spaced out one, listen to how when I go into mono, the high frequencies just disappear. Guess what? That's what's going to happen in your mix. If you mess with the panning at all or any other instruments come in or you end up summing it to mono, you're going to lose all the top end. Then you're going to be having to reach for EQs to try to fix it. I'd rather you just fix it at the source by doing a better job of miking it. So let's do that again. I'll flip to mono, listen to the high frequencies disappear. It loses the clarity. Now, could we mess with the positioning and find that perfect position? Yeah, probably. But then I might move a little bit while I play. And guess what? That's going to change the relative distance between myself, this big instrument, and each of the microphones. So it's probably going to mess up here and there. Versus if it's XY, I can move all I want. It's going to be the same distance from the microphones. The distance will change, but it'll be the same distance to both mics. So when we fold it to mono or listen in stereo, it's still going to sound good. If you want to hear me doing this in action times up to like 10 or 12 acoustic guitar parts, go listen to my EP called Rain. Uh, it's on Spotify, I, Apple Music, just search Joe Gilder, Rain. I recorded all the guitars like this, and then if there were too many guitars and I didn't really need the stereo-ness, I would sum several of them to mono and send one to the right, one to the left, losing the stereo-ness of the single guitar, but adding one to the left and the right and getting a sort of a doubled effect. But the quality of the guitars never changed because I recorded it this way. Hey, thanks for hanging out for this fun little recording experiment today. Go try it. Come back and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Link to these microphones in the description. Also, if you haven't gotten my recording cheat sheet, which talks about a lot of my different hacks for getting great recordings, you can check that out at recordingcheatsheet.com. Thanks for watching. See ya.